And is the audio clear? Yeah? Okay, great, great. Let me share my screen. Okay, I'm using a Mac, so give me a second here. Let me just see how I can make it work on the window side of things. Can you see my MT4 here? Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Okay, so how have you guys been? Dandy. <laughs> good, good. Anyone new in here today? Anyone new? Someone who's never seen one of my webinars or attended uh, one of my webinars live? Okay. Good, good to have you guys on board. Uh, those of you who are new, you guys, uh, if you don't know, um, we do things a little bit differently in here. It's not a typical webinar where I just, you know, the mentor keeps blabbing away with nonsense information. We go more hardcore, we go more in depth and we make it more interactive. So uh, it's great to have you guys on board. Gustavo, first webinar. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so we're going to start off with some updates, a couple things. Uh, uh, Jane, yes, this is on pivot points. So a couple things. Now, uh, today is June 10th. Um, on, in about a week's time, I will be in Montreal uh, in Canada. And then the timings for our webinars are going to change a bit. Uh, and, you know, we'll probably keep it in the afternoon uh, New York time which will be another four hours uh, from now, more or less. So timings will change a little bit uh, once I'm there. A any of you guys in Canada by any chance? Okay. Okay, so those of you who are in Canada, get in touch with me. Um, would love to catch up with you guys if you guys are in the area in Montreal or Toronto. Uh, those of you who are, who are in London, uh, towards the end of the year, pretty much after my trip to Canada, I will make a trip to London. So uh, I think uh, some of you guys came to meet me last time in London at a Starbucks in King's Cross. It was great to meet some of you guys there. I uh, hope to see more of you guys uh, uh, this year Okay, so let's get started now. How many of you guys? Uh, uh, are, are trading pro trading strategy Okay Yeah, it looks like there's several of you trading pro trading strategy Okay Let's go. Let's start with what are the main concerns? Okay, some are saying want to start, same chart on my screen now, okay. Okay, used to a trade supply and demand for some time, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, DP, the webinar is recorded. Uh, Siraj, I didn't understand your strategy before. Okay, so how many, okay, let me ask you guys this. How many guys are new to the strategy? Okay, there seems to be quite a bit of new people to the strategy. So let's do this. Let's take the strategy from the top and we'll work our way from there. Yeah, sounds good. And at any point, if there's any questions, please do stop me. I will be more than happy to stop and explain it. If you don't understand, I will explain it in a different way until you do understand. So not to worry about that. Uh, audio okay with everyone? Okay, some say audio okay, sound screen, okay. Uh, Anil, I mailed you some concerns. Okay, I'll have a look at, um, guys, for those of you who email me, please note, a lot of my emails are answered by my staff. Uh, and uh, many times, 
when I do answer them, I get to them very, very late. So the best way to ask questions is in, in the site itself uh, or expect an answer from one of my staff members um, instead of me because I spend a lot of time over at Forex Watchers and uh, I barely get some time over at Urban Forex uh, for all the emails because I, I, I get bombarded with emails from you guys sometimes. So um, I'm only human, right? So I'll do as much as I can. All right, so let's get started here. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Okay, so pro trading strategy works around pro trading strategy works around uh, pivot points. How many of you guys are familiar with pivot points? What are pivot points? What are these things? Okay, high, low, close from yesterday, magnets. Yeah, it's a calculation. It's the average of yesterday's movement, basically. Okay, and yes, those of you guys who have watched my previous webinar, they're nothing but walls. They're like support and resistance. They're walls. They're there to stop you. They're there to stop your market. Now, the pivot points I have posted up on my screen here doesn't just use yesterday. So this is the pivot points here represent one day, the pivot points here represent another day, and the pivot points here represent another day. So they represent a different, uh, a different, different days. Uh, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'll move this in a bit. And I'll take a screenshot for you guys. So it's easier. Okay, took a screenshot just now. Um, let me know if you guys can see my circle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This should be a lot more clear and there, there will be a lot of less, less lag on this. Okay. So what I generally concern myself is with three days worth of pivot points. Okay. This day, this day and this day. Okay. Why three days? Because prices generally react based on levels that occur not just from yesterday, but from the day before. Take a look at this one. Yeah, you see that? So I, I use an average of three days to get an understanding of if markets are gonna hold in certain areas. Okay, so let's move on, let's move on. All right. So the next thing with the pivot points is also using the word, uh, using exhaustion candles. Are you guys familiar with exhaustion candles? Yeah. Okay. Pin bars. Yeah. Pin bars, exhaustion candles, uh, hammers, inverse hammers. Yeah. Large wicks or large tails, small bodies. Yeah. What are they? Wearing? No, not a doji. Not a doji. Dojis are different. Okay. But instead of getting into um, the explanation of, let's say what, what it's called, for example, a doji or a exhaustion candle, instead of talking about what it's called, let's go into the core of why an exhaustion candle. Okay. Let me show you guys something here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let me know if you guys can see the whiteboard. Okay, what an exhaustion candle is. So let's say the exhaustion looks like this. Okay, and let's say that that is, um, that's a red bar. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Don't try to think what it's trying to tell you. Just try to think what it's doing. And, and the reality is there's buying pressure. So if I was to go to a lower time frame, so let's say we can see this on the one hour, right? This is a 60 minute chart, for example. 
What happens if I go down to the 15 or the five minute chart? What does that look like? Yeah, a V shape, right? So take a look here. How many candles of the 15 minute are inside the 60? Four. That means the market opened here, it came this low and closed here, which means on the 15 minute in four candles, he went boom, boom. Now, isn't that a pretty deep retracement? If that was a downtrend, for example, for somebody and the market coming back up at them this high, isn't that saying basically that the downtrend is over? Yeah, it's a pretty deep retracement. Now, what happens if this candle was green? What if this was green? Now, if it's green, it's more effective. Here's why, because now your, your close happened up here. It overtook the sellers, correct, Chris O. It overtook the sellers, which means there is more buying pressure, more than even the sellers anticipated. Okay, so keep that in mind. If the bar is red, you might get a, um, sorry, let me undo this a bit. If the bar is red, you might get a small price back down before going back up. So you might get a little pullback in it. If the bar is green, you're going to get less retracement. It's going to usually be more of uh, in a hurry. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this on the charts. Okay, you always have to wait for a candle close. Um, I didn't see who was that question from, but candle close always. Okay, so let's point out some exhaustion candles. What exhaustion candles do we have? Does that classify as an exhaustion? Okay, why not? Now it's in a downtrend and that exhaustion candle is red, but what's wrong with it? Yeah, the wick or the hat, you know, there's still a little bit of, uh, of selling pressure in there as well. When the buyers went up, it got pushed, pushed down. Okay, what about the next bar? Okay. What's so good about that? Okay, long wick and everything. Okay, now, if this exhaustion candle is bullish, which means buying favor, and if I hit the buy at the close of this candle and I hit the buy at the very next candle, what's gonna happen? And why doesn't it go up? Yeah, the wall. There's a wall right there. Now, how many walls do we have right there? Now, take a look at this. Where is my, oh man. Now, you got a barrier right here. You're right at support, uh, sorry, resistance. Okay, and then you got this price right above you here and you're working with this area here so you got a lot of congestion in this area you only have a free move if you can get above this spot sorry if you can get above this area and close above there then you have a little bit more space to go until here but up until then you got right at support which is going to cause you problems 
the price fights the support, gets up to the next, sorry, fights this resistance, gets up to the next resistance and fails and comes right back down. Hence, this price can't get anywhere. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth, okay? So far, so good. Can, can you guys, uh, do you guys understand it so far? Okay, you got the exhaustion candle which says buy, but then you got a wall right in front of you that says, well, try if you want, I won't let you through. Okay, or I'm gonna at least cause you problems. Okay, so that car cannot drive north, it's having a problem. Okay, all right, now, can we have known this ahead of time that this buy will not work? This is a little bit more advanced. Yeah, how can we have known that? Okay, I'll give you guys 10 seconds to come up with some opinions. Apart from the wall, how can we know? Yeah, uh, Peter Yang, that's pretty much the best thing. The steep downtrend has a meaning. It doesn't mean the buy cannot work, but that steep downtrend, excuse me, that steep downtrend has some sort of resemblance of if this entire thing is down from here to here, how much of a pullback is this? This little, uh, you know, uh, exhaustion candle kind of looking. Isn't that like 10% maybe? It's very small, right? So take a look at a different one. Now, if we say this is an exa uh, exhaustion candle, for example, right here. Look at this up move. Isn't this up move fighting? It keeps having a little struggle up and down, up and down, up and down. It's not straight green bars and then an exhaustion. Does that make sense? Yeah, now take a look at this one. Now here is a, a weaker exhaustion, but it's accompanied by a struggle. There's green bars and red bars, green bars and red bars. It's accompanied by a struggle. Here, it, there is no struggle. It's just straight red bars coming down and then it, it puts in one exhaustion candle. Well, it's gonna be a strong battle and the sellers definitely have the money. Yeah, so some, sometimes keeping stuff like that in mind can, can keep you away from bad trades. But to simplify things, you will have your, uh, your walls that will just stop the market. Okay, so let's take a look at some more examples, yeah? Is there a specific pair you guys like? Euro yen, pound yen. Okay, let's start with pound yen and we'll work our way. Um, audio still okay? Okay. So you guys said euro yen, right? Where's euro yen here? Okay, there we go, we got euro yen. Let's look at the current market situations. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Now, we got an exhaustion candle in a downtrend like this. It's not it's telling you the markets are gonna reverse, but what does this exhaustion like that tell you? What does that represent? Yeah, a continuation. A continuation. Now, th these are very, very powerful. Why, why are these powerful? What do you think? Let's draw them, let's draw them. You'll get a better idea, watch. Okay, whiteboard ready. Yeah, okay. I want you guys to take a moment and, and refrain from typing and I want you guys to watch the logic, okay? Forget the design, forget anything, just watch the logic of things, okay? The market was coming down and down and down and down. 
And then suddenly a strong move up happened. Would you now think everyone who was looking at this downtrend is now looking at it as, oh my God, I have to buy this. Otherwise I'm not gonna get my Ferrari, right? So they start chasing it right up here for the buys. And as it comes right back down, these guys who hit the buys got stopped out. Everyone who was selling earlier closed their positions. Hence, it tricked the market. Now the selling pressure gets even more powerful because now everyone is hitting, hitting the buys right around here. There's more orders for the big boys to take for a sell, right? There, isn't the price up here better compared to the price down here? So the big boys can say, okay, well, I like this price. If people are willing to buy an expensive price, well, thank you. So then they start, they start hammering it back down, right? And people will keep buying it thinking, oh, okay, maybe it's a double bottom. They keep buying it. Okay, well, uh, it's gonna come back up. And then there's hope. And then most people keep moving their stop losses lower and lower and lower and lower until sooner or later, you know, they experience some massively emotional moment where the number finally gets too much and they actually say, okay, enough, I'm gonna close this trade. Okay. All right. So, many of you guys experienced that before? Happens to everyone, right? Yeah, so it's a common problem in the market. Um, once you get so involved in a market because of a sudden movement, people can't think the other way. They only, okay, l l l let me tell you something here. You have a buy going on, right? And then suddenly it, it does this. And you're thinking, I'm gonna say it's a sell, right? If I'm gonna say it's a sell from here, notice even if it does this, People are thinking, okay, it's just retracing for a sell. And then it does this, oh, it's just retracing for a sell. No one sees that it's holding in the buy area because whoever's in the sell cannot see the buys anymore. He goes blind from the buys. He only sees the sell side, okay? So these designs that show up like this, that form an exhaustion, are very, very lucrative uh, in that sense. So does that make sense why I, I really, really like the exhaustion candles? It's not the design, it's the story that goes with the design. Does that make sense? Okay, did, did, did everyone understand that? Um, does anyone need, a, need another example for that? Yeah, another example? Okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do one more example here. Okay, now, suppose the markets are going in an uptrend, yeah? Up, now I'm gonna do the inverse way. I'm gonna do the continuation pattern. Markets are going in an uptrend. Now, now when the markets are going in an uptrend, now how long has this uptrend been going? It started here, right? What do you think people are thinking at this stage? There are two types of people. Okay, I want you to tell me two types of people. What are the two types of people? Okay, type one. Type one says, well, the buyers can go on forever. So they're what we call the counter trend traders, which is let me sell this thing up here because it's way too high. Then there are people who's like, oh, I now see the uptrend and they start buying now, which are called the late buyers. Okay. Okay, these are the two types of people. One, who enter very late for the buys and two, who keep thinking it can go on forever. Let me hit the sells. But the guy who's trying to hit the sells doesn't hit the sell now. He waits for a signal. That signal is now the person who wants to sell, 
he now looks at this and says, oh my God, it's leaving. And he, the poor fella hits the sell right there at the lowest price possible. The buyer who gets in late, unfortunately, stopped out. He's out of the game. The seller who's in this case, once the market jumps back up, he's out. If the market jumps back up almost 100%, what does this look like on a candle if I go to a higher time frame? Nope, not a doji. It'll look more like an exhaustion. Yeah, it'll look like this. Okay, so this design, if it's accompanied by pivot points, which says it went below the pivot point, but he never stayed there, he came back. That tells you two informations. One, people got screwed over, and two, your support resistance of the pivot point is holding. That's a double confirmation for you, and you have the losing trader's money. Okay, that's the best fuel you're gonna get in the market is the losing trader's money. Hence, that's when the markets propel. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, this is why we, we like to talk about exhaustion candles and this is why exhaustion candles are very, very powerful. They come with a message. It's not just a design, it's a message. Okay, what if the exhaustion candle is on the four hour, not the one hour? A chart's a chart, remove the time frame, an exhaustion candle still represents the same thing. If you remove the time frame and you don't see the time frame and you just look at the chart, you can still read it, right? So think of it in that sense. Okay, now let's go back to our charts again. Let's now put this all together. Let's put the pivot points together with the exhaustion candles and we'll try to talk more on how do you enter, how do you exit, and then we'll get into how do you maximize profit? Because maximizing profit has a lot to do with what pairs are correlating or what pairs are synced, right? So we'll get into that as well. So let's, let's go first into the screen sharing here. Let me open this up again. Okay, screen visible. Okay, great. All right, so let's let's take a look for an exhaustion candle. Now, would we say this is an exhaustion candle here? Do you guys remember the four rules? Was it four or five rules I've made for exhaustion candles? Okay. All right, here we go. Here's some rules for exhaustion candles. One, your tail or your wick must be bigger than your body. Yeah, the tail or wick must be bigger than the body. So you see this right here? You see how this wick, how, how big the size of this wick is? Look at the size of the body. Okay, equilibrium there. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. What's the next rule? Too small, yeah. Too small. Your exhaustion candle must be bigger than the previous candle, correct? Okay. Yes, the exhaustion candle must be in a trend. If it's in a range, it needs to be on the top or bottom of a range. It cannot be in the middle of a range. But if you're in a trend, it must be in a trend, basically. The exhaustion candle might needs to show up as a reversal or a continuation. Yeah? Okay, fourth rule. Yeah, the tail sticks out. Yeah, it needs to stick out. Look at the area to my left. Where is my shapes? 
If I do this, if I say this is the tail and I go to my left, does it stick out? Has price ever been there before? Yeah, clear space. So these are the four rules that if you have these four rules with your exhaustion, you have every Tom, Dick and Harry trying to buy this thing. So an example, let's assume this is a good exhaustion, just assumption, it's not one, but if it had a very big tail and wick and everything, every guy would look at this as, oh, that's a higher high. Oh, it's breaking out above the highs. All breakout traders buy it. All trend traders buy it. But then when it comes back and leaves that big wick on top, you know that everyone screwed over, everybody screwed over. And that's fuel for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, you get a lot of selling pressures, yeah, yeah. So you gotta keep that stuff in mind. Okay, so let's take a look at some more examples. Okay. Uh, you also guys said pound yen. Let's take a look at pound yen, see if there's anything in the recent markets. Okay, all right. All right, let's take a look at this fellow here. Now, what's wrong with this exhaustion candle? What are the criterias? Uh, wrangle, many people do that. I used to do that too. Um, I used to always want confirmation. I used to always get into the market very, very late. It was a common thing for me also. Okay, it's bigger than the previous candle. It's in an uptrend. Okay, the bar is not red, the bar is green, which means it's retraced a lot, but it hasn't retraced 100%. Okay, it's retraced only 70%, basically, if that's how you look at it. Which means the uptrend is still valid. Okay. You ready on how to read stuff like this? Are you guys ready for the next thing? Okay, when you see a candle that looks like this, do you remember from what I told you guys earlier, you're gonna get one more push up. Additional retracement is gonna come in because the candle is not red, it's green. Okay, when this one, okay, answer these questions. When this went up, and it retraced. See, the move up here, and then the retrace there. How much retracement is that? Fifty percent. What about this move up here? This move up here, and then that retracement there. Uh, Xiaomi, yes, it's recorded. Fifty percent. Okay, so one fifty percent move. Next fifty percent move. And then the next move goes up all the way to here. And then this goes all the way down to there. How much retracement is that? Okay, that's a pretty deep retracement. Now it accompanies with an exhaustion candle which screwed people over. Now, here comes the interesting part is here comes what we call the re-screwing over, screwing people over yet once again because this exhaustion candle makes everyone sell but it's not ready yet right it's not ready yet on the lower time frame on the 15 minute everyone sees red bars on the five minute everyone sees red bars so they want to sell that thing this thing goes back up but we know that this exhaustion candle has all the right criterias to stop the market he goes up yet once again exhaustion candle halt red bar holding at this where's my arrow holding at this pivot level let's take a look at this pivot area here on the last three days what's gonna mess with you you have insert uh, where's my sorry i haven't used the uh, mt4 in a while so you got this area this area this area now as the candles drop just below that and close you have an open run all the way down to here basically do we not so 
It is at that point when you can see things are lining up, the story is lining up. The exhaustion candle didn't just show up in all green bars. It showed up after a series of struggling up, struggling up, struggling up, and then boom. It's got the pivot points, it's got the exhaustion candle, and it's giving you a better price to get to the next level because this exhaustion candle does not have immediacy. It's not red, it's green, which means one more retracement coming in. Make sense? Okay, I, I know this might be a little bit more advanced uh, than the easier ones that I show, which is just an exhaustion candle get in on the close of the next bar. But for those, I just wanted to also make sure that those of you who were, who've already traded Forex uh, pro trading uh, strategy over the years can get something a little bit more advanced as well. Okay, makes sense so far? Everything's so good? So far so good? Okay, now, now if we look at this and we're like, okay, well, what if I put my stop loss up here at 50, 157.50, and then I trade all the way down to here to 156.40, I'm making 90 pips, 90 pips for a risk of approximately 40 pips, Okay, I'm making a little bit over two is to one. How, how can I maximize this? Correlation. Okay, what pairs work with pound yen? Okay, Joe, sell all the yen pairs, leading lagging pairs, USD yen, Euro yen, okay. The pound group, okay. This is how you're gonna check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys something here. This is the 7th of June, okay? Remember the date, 7th of June? Uh, and let's take a look at something. I'm gonna show you guys something. Um, I, you guys can do this on your own, but I'm gonna show you something that we do proprietary at Forex Watchers and you guys will get an idea of how to leverage the information to your, uh, to your side. Okay, let's go to our currency strength. We'll have an app out for you guys for the currency strength. You guys can always use this. I'll have a staff member post some uh, currency strength numbers for you on Urban Forex as well, so you guys have that. Okay, so June 7th, right? Where's, where's June 7th? Uh, June 7th, here we go. June 6th, June 7th. Let's take a look at the numbers up here. Oh, sorry. Okay, we got US dollar minus three, euro one, pound, uh, sorry, yen minus one, pound minus three. Now, this is out of six. Okay, it's out of six. So does pound have a majority power? Does yen have a majority power? Okay, it's out of six. It needs to be either very high in the plus or very low in the minus. Okay, pound is weaker than yen, yes, but it's not a control pair. A control pair means he's extremely weak across the board. Okay, so let me take a look at June 6th. Okay, now we have June 6th. What does yen say on June 6th? What's that number? Yeah, it's a plus six, which means yen is very, very strong. What does that tell you for pound yen? Which direction do we need to go? Yeah, down, because yen, for yen to be strong, pound yen needs to go down, right? Right, does everyone understand that? Why pound yen has to go down? This chart represents the pair on the left, which is pound. If this chart goes down, that means pound is weak, but the opposite is strong, okay? For those of you who, like, who, need, who need to understand that. If this chart goes up, that means the left pair is strong, the right one is weak. Okay, so when we look at all this information, 
Um, Paul, I'll, I'll get you guys uh, not access because that's proprietary what we do at Forex Watchers, but I will get you guys access to it on uh, uh, Urban Forex. No worries. Okay, so what what uh, what this what this information tells you is not only do you have this trade telling you exhaustion candle, it's telling you pivot points, it's telling you the entire yen group is trying to drop. You can now go in with pound yen, euro yen, Aussie yen, New Zealand yen, uh, and, and many, many more. And as soon as your pound yen is approaching your area of support, you're going to exit out all your trades and you go from making 90 pips to close to 600, 700 pips maybe. Does that make sense? You guys have seen the videos where we do correlation trades, right? It's on YouTube. We take entire batches of trades and, and then we, once you know the direction, once you have the edge, once you have a high percentage of accuracy, then you milk the process. Why take 90 pips from Take as much as you can. Milk it. Does that make sense? Now, when you're wrong, it will also hurt you at the same speed. So be careful. This is why you must make sure when you take a trade, you have at least a one is to one or a two is to one. Why one is to one? Because the accuracy of this is quite high, but a two is to one makes you safer, which means a two is to one means you need to be, uh, you're making money two times. And when you lose money, you lose money only one time, which also calculates in you need to be right only 33% of the time to break even 33% of the time. That's a very low number. Okay. Chris judge. Yeah. Yeah. The, the pivots on the other charts will make a difference also, Chris, um, and keeping on top of all that can really drive you nuts at times. Let's, let's take a look at that. Actually, this is what June 7th. Let's compare. What pair should we compare this to? So we're on pound yen. What other yen pair shall we compare this to? USD yen? Let's take a look at USD yen. Let's see on June 7th at, uh, what is this, uh, 10 o'clock? Well, let me get my crosshair out. This is at 11 o'clock. So USD yen, 7th June, 11 o'clock. Let's see, where's 7th June? Oh, this is February. Okay, 7th June. 11 o'clock, which puts me right at here. Okay, now we're at this area for this guy. And if we sell, the, where is my arrow? If we sell this fella here, is that right? Let me move this out. Yeah. If we sell that fella there, where is the support? It's all the way down here. It's very, very low. So he has no interference coming down. Okay. Next one, what other pair do we have? Euro yen, let's take a look at Euro yen. Oh, looks like the line stays, okay. Well, June 7th at, this is nine o'clock, 10, 11. Okay, this is 11 o'clock, up here. So if we sell from up in this area, now that one's a close one, look at that. If you keep your stops even above your pivot point, that can possibly stop you out on that pair. So that one is a bit risky. Okay, he might just snag your stop on that one. Okay, but he also has an open run down till this area at 122.03. Okay, let's take a look at Aussie yen. Where's Aussie? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie yen. Okay, 7th of June at, this is 10, 11, that puts you right around there, right there. Okay, no exhaustion, no nothing, pure green bars. So this one is a bit dangerous. Okay, let's take a look at New Zealand yen though. See if that one's a little bit healthier. Okay, New Zealand yen, 7th of June, straight green bars also. Okay, 11 o'clock puts you right around here. So there are a few pairs you can avoid. There are a few pairs you can avoid. So you can only take USD yen, pound yen, and euro yen in this particular case. 
Okay, but we also don't want to wait until it hits R1. No, if, if you use them together in correlation, notice all three pairs, Euro Yen, uh, Pound Yen and USD Yen did not have support anywhere nearby. It was a little bit far away. It gives you a distance of two is to one on average. So you can only take those three pairs, unfortunately. Does that make sense? So you want to use correlation, you want to use your technicals together, you want to use a story, and the exhaustion candles tells a story as well. And you want to put this all together and execute it to get the best possible return. Okay, so this coming month, uh, this coming next two weeks, we're going to have another webinar in two weeks. How many of you guys are going to try this strategy in the next, uh, uh, over the next two weeks? Okay. Can you guys do me a favor and update on Urban Forex and let me know what's your progress? And I'll have a team of uh, me and my staff will we'll help you go through any hurdles or mistakes that you might do. And then let me know how the progress is and if you guys like it, we'll, we, can, we can go further deeper into it. However, if it's not a strategy that you guys like, we can go into you know our other strategies like divergence and stuff like that that we also teach. But if you guys can really do pro trading strategy, it's one of my favorite ones and it does quite well. Uh, Chris Judge, uh, string charts, like I said, it's not available to the general public. Forex Watchers is a very, you know, uh, it's a very private group there. Uh, I actually have traders over there where we train and we trade together two times, two times a day. Um, but I can have the numbers copied over to uh, uh, Urban Forex by some staff members. Yeah, yeah, this webinar is recorded. So it will be up again in 24 hours or so, and you guys will be able to watch it. Sorry about last time, it took a little bit longer. All right guys, so that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's Friday, go out, stop trading, go out, have a good time, and uh, have an additional beer or something on me. Enjoy guys. Cheers, until next time.